Good evening and thank you for joining us. Eight more Canadian officials, including two experts from the Transportation Safety Board, will be heading to Iran tomorrow. They will be in Tehran as part of the investigation into the downing of Ukraine Flight 752. In this country, Canadians are mourning the victims. This evening, the Prime Minister is attending a vigil in Alberta, a province 13 of the victims called home. We'll take you to the memorial in just a moment. But first, here's Mike LeCouture with our top story. The pain of the lives lost so clear on the mourners' faces as the Iranian national anthem blares at a vigil in Toronto. The community united in grief, but also celebrating the lives that were lived. Masood Niknam's brother was on the flight. He was, he was a symbol of love. He loved his kids. He loved his wife. He loved his parents. He loved his brothers. It's a pain shared by the entire country, as is the resolve to get answers about this tragedy. We will seek accountability together, and we will seek and we will get justice together. Now that starts with having Canadian investigators on the ground in Iran. Foreign Affairs Minister François-Philippe Champagne said the first wave of Canadian officials are on the ground in Tehran, with more visas being issued today for the rest of the Standing Rapid Deployment team. Two members of Canada's Transportation Safety Board are expected to arrive Monday. But how much access will they get? Canada has no formal diplomatic relations with Iran, so there's little muscle our government can flex. A lot of uh, what we will be able to do, in a way, rests on uh, Iran's willingness uh, to help. Canada is encouraged by that fact. However, the Iranian regime did try to cover up the cause for three days. And Musu worries it could limit access to investigators when the probe really begins. And if you want them to release information about chain of command and responsibility, there are a number of arguments that they can use to say we're going to do the investigation and they're, we're going to do the investigation, we're going to tell you the results. Our officials are concerned about that and it's why the Canadian government continues to call for full transparency from Iran in the name of the 176 victims. Michael Couture, Global News, Ottawa. Let's go to that vigil in Alberta now on the University of Alberta campus. Global Edmonton's Quinn Oler joins us from the service where Prime Minister Justin Trudeau spoke to those grieving the lives lost. Quinn? Prime Minister Justin Trudeau making the trip to Edmonton to share in the grief and bring a message from Canadians to all those affected by this tragedy. Trudeau saying that although there are no words to ease the pain, the suffering and the outrage that is being felt, he hopes the victim's loved ones will find comfort knowing that Canadians are behind them. Trudeau also calling for justice and accountability in this case, saying they won't rest until there are answers. However, most of his speech focusing on the families, the individuals and the futures lost. Family after family mourning the loss of a loved one who was not just shaping their own lives, but building this country. Every single one of those 57 stories. Thousands of people showing up at this memorial today. Crowds as they were walking in, walked past a memorial for the victims with all their pictures, including two young girls aged 10 and 14. Their peers, children, talking about their kindness and their laughter showing the impact this tragedy has had on all ages. I can't possibly imagine what it was like for her on that plane, what her last thoughts were before the plane crashed. We can't bring back our beloved Dadia, but we can only hope she's in a better place now. Many of the people that we spoke to today said they didn't know the victims, but they said it was extremely important for them to be here to support those who did. Robin? Quinn Oler in Edmonton. Thanks, Quinn. Iran's leaders are facing growing calls to dismiss senior officials over the downing of that passenger plane. And a special unit from Ukraine is in Tehran, keeping a close watch on what Iran does with the wreckage. Our Crystal Gomansing is in Ukraine's capital tonight with the latest on the investigation. Crystal. 
Robin, as soon as that Ukrainian Airlines plane was shot down, Ukraine's president immediately put the National Security and Defense Council agency into action, beginning the investigation. Now those workers on the ground in Tehran are sharing some compelling images. The charred pieces of wreckage and personal items are all investigative puzzle pieces. The task of reconstructing the Boeing 737 is underway. The work is being overseen by the National Security Defense Council of Ukraine. Investigators on the ground can learn a huge amount about an accident, but what they can't learn is what exact throttle position was on the right engine or what exact oil pressure was on the left engine. And would either of those things have any impact? That's why they need to have the flight data recorder. Vladimir Zelensky in his address Saturday praised the quick work of the council as he urged all countries involved, including Canada, to work as an international investigative group. As more teams are granted permission to enter Iran, many Iranians hit the streets. For the second day, people defiantly spoke out against their government, calling for leaders to resign. That this is turning into an internal Iranian crisis. So we've seen that there were demonstrations because ultimately the Canadians are ahead and all the other nationalities of uh, citizens that who flew. The deaths of the 176 people, many of Iranian descent but global citizens, has added to the cocktail of volatility in the region. And then there's Donald Trump. He hit Twitter after seeing the protests, writing, to the leaders of Iran, do not kill your protesters. Thousands have already been killed or imprisoned by you, and the world is watching. More importantly, the USA is watching. Turn your internet back on and let reporters roam free. Stop the killing of your great Iranian people. Well, the president didn't say there was a tangible, uh, he didn't cite a specific piece of evidence. What he said is he probably, he believed. Iran blamed human error for the plane being shot down, but say violent exchanges with the U.S. played a role as military members were poised to be hit. Eleven Ukrainian airline staff died when the plane was shot down on the 8th. The prosecutor general has opened up an investigation into the murder of those citizens. Ukraine's president also wants Iran to compensate the victims' families. Now, exactly how that will happen is unclear. Iran's economy has been crippled for years in part by sanctions, and the U.S. just added more. Robin? Crystal Gromancing in Kyiv, Ukraine.